a healthy 35-year-old woman gets rear-ended at a high rate of speed. She walks away with a little bit of a sore neck. No big deal, right? Wrong. Three hours later, she's nauseated, vomiting, dizzy, can't stand straight. It wasn't just whiplash. So what is it? It was a hidden tear inside of her brain's blood supply. It was a vertebral artery dissection. So let's break down how it happens, how you catch it, and how you treat it. We have two vertebral arteries that run inside of your spine and supply blood to your brain. If you're involved in some type of traumatic accident where there's sudden motion of your head, you can actually tear or stretch those blood vessels that run through the spine. That tear can disrupt the wall of the blood vessel and cause something called a dissection. That dissection or tear in the wall of the blood vessel could potentially affect the way blood flows through the vessel and to your brain. So if it slows down flow or obstructs flow, it could even cause a stroke. Well, doctor, could it happen from other things too? Absolutely, even a trip to the chiropractor can potentially dissect your vertebral artery. So if this is happening to you, what symptoms do you watch for? And here's the scary thing is most people think it's just regular neck pain. The warning signs of a potential vertebral artery dissection is a headache, typically in the back part of your head, dizziness or vertigo, double vision, trouble walking, and even sometimes no symptoms at all until you have a stroke. That's why anyone that presents to the emergency department with a traumatic injury and complaints of neck pain or any of the symptoms I just mentioned, not only gets a CAT scan of their brain, but gets something called a CTA or a CT angiogram of the head and neck. That's a special test that we order to look at the way blood flows through our vessels in our neck going into our brain. So if they do have a dissection, what are we looking for on the CTA? You're most likely going to see narrowing of the artery, also called the string sign. That's when the artery is normal caliber and then where the dissection is, it starts to string out or get smaller. You can have thickening of the wall of the blood vessel from a hematoma in that vessel wall. If the injury is severe enough, you can even develop something called a pseudoaneurysm. That's when the injury to the blood vessel wall is so severe that weakness will cause a little bubble off the side of the blood vessel wall. And you can imagine that that little pseudoaneurysm is pretty weak and could even rupture or form a clot. Here's the good news is that most dissections don't need surgery. The treatment is usually medical management. You can treat a torn blood vessel with medicine? Hear me out on this one. Our bodies are really good healers. What we really want to prevent is clotting on that area where the blood vessel was damaged. Think of it kind of like a cut on your hand. It starts a bleeding initially and then it forms a clot and stops bleeding. And if you injure the inside of a blood vessel wall, it kind of does the same thing. Your body responds to that injury by forming a clot on it. You could see how a clot that develops on the inside of a blood vessel could potentially be dangerous because it can block the way the blood flows through the vessel or those little clots can break off and then go to other downstream parts of that blood vessel, which means your brain. And if it blocks off blood flow there, that is what can cause a stroke. So we actually treat a tear of the blood vessel wall with blood thinners so we don't propagate the clot. And the good news is that most dissections heal on their own within weeks to months. However, really bad ones or ones that form pseudoaneurysms may need something like an endovascular stent or coil to normalize the flow through the vessel. So back to our patient, I showed the CT scan of her neck to trick you because this scan is normal. So she had no fracture to her neck. This is her CT angiogram. And you can see right here that there is a little bit of narrowing in that vertebral artery. That's the area of the dissection. And if we look at the axial cuts of the spine, meaning cuts across the neck like this, we can see the little vertebral artery right here. But on the opposite side, we see nothing, which means that blood flow through that area has stopped. So what do we do with this patient? We've made the diagnosis of a dissection in her vertebral artery. Given her symptoms and the testing results, we decided to admit her for observation and blood pressure control. It's really important in cases like this to not let the blood pressure get too high or too low. A blood pressure that's too high can make the dissection worse, and a blood pressure that's too low can potentially lead to stroke. Think of it like you can't push enough blood flow through that area where it's narrowed. 
We also want to do an MRI of her brain to rule out stroke, but remember, even a negative MRI doesn't necessarily rule out a small little stroke. And if they do have neurological symptoms like our patient did, we need to make sure we keep a close eye on them to ensure that they're not getting worse. If a stroke has occurred, they will likely need rehabilitation. May is Stroke Awareness Month, and it's important that we recognize that stroke can happen in any age and from a variety of different causes. I mean, this patient is a healthy 35-year-old woman that was involved in a car accident. Keep in mind that not all dissections are traumatic and you can even have a spontaneous dissection. That means it's one that can happen without any type of injury. So if this was a spontaneous dissection, we would want to work up some connective tissue disorders that could potentially be the source of it. Things like Marfan syndrome or Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Those type of disease processes along with many other types of connective tissue disorders can be associated with spontaneous dissections. Fun fact, May is also Ehlers-Danlos Awareness Month. We will definitely be talking about that later. Getting back to our patient, she was admitted to the hospital and she had an MRI of her brain that was negative. She was started on blood thinners and was watched closely. Her symptoms did not worsen and she was able to be discharged home the very next day. She was continued on these blood thinners for three months and had a repeat CT angiogram that showed complete healing of the blood vessel. And the even better news is that she made a full recovery. So here are the final takeaways. Sudden headache, dizziness, or vision changes? Get scanned. Vertebral artery dissection is rare, but early diagnosis can save lives. And if you want to know more of things just like this, make sure that you join my weekly newsletter where I share medical knowledge just like this. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care? Stay tuned next week, and I'll go through another case.